And we're back with part two of Louis Erdrich's The Red Convertible. So Henry goes to Vietnam. He's taken prisoner. Um, he's a prisoner of war and prisoners of war were treated very badly um, by the Viet Cong. Tortured, um, brutal stuff, brutal stuff. When he came home, Henry was very different. And I'll say this, the change was no good. Uh, I think Lyme and our, our narrator is the master of the understatement, right? Understatement. You could hardly expect him to change for the better, I know, but he was quiet, so quiet, never comfortable sitting still anywhere. Um, he's like a caged animal now, instead of a, an animal in nature. Um, then they get a TV, a color TV, and that you know, the images of Vietnam were very much, it was a very, very televised war. And of course that just brings everything back um, for Henry. Everything's too, too real, right? Everything is too real for him. And Lyman's luck continues. Uh, again, just to loop back to an earlier theme, when one brother seems to have this very good luck and the other doesn't for whatever reason, right? Um, you can't help but feel guilty when you're the brother who has had the better the better fortune. My mom came in, turned the set off, real quiet. Henry bit his lip to the point where he was bleeding. And told us she had made something for supper, so he went and sat down. There was still blood going down Henry's chin. But he didn't notice it, and no one said anything, even though every time he took a bit of his bread, his, oof, his, yeah, oof, <laughs> The way Lyman just tells it, and you just, the pain, the, the, the pain here. While Henry was not around, we talked about what was going to happen to him. There were no Indian doctors on the reservation. My mom was afraid of trusting the old man, Moses Pillager, because he courted her long ago. Um, yeah, full of potholes, um, no doctor. Um, life on the reservation is brutal, and it is to, to this day. Um, COVID-19 hit Native Americans far worse than um, people like me with excellent health insurance, white Americans, um, older people, especially older Native Americans, uh, some of the last people to speak the languages are, are dying. Um, then Lyman, to, to try to keep his brother, to, for his brother, he beats up the car, right, because he knows his brother he knows his brother will fix it. Why? Because his brother, Henry, Henry knows Lyman beat the car up for him. So he fixes the car up because he knows Lyman beat it up for him to fix up. I don't think he fixes it up just because, oh, I can't stand to see a car all beat up. No. This is how brothers sustain themselves. But it has a limit, as we see. Henry is almost nonverbal. Um, he gets no help um, from the veterans. There's just nothing. There's just there's all he has is a, a, a younger, lucky brother who can't does everything he can, but can only do so much. Um, and Lyman has that picture of them. It's just hard. It's just hard. The picture was taken on Henry's last day. The sister took the picture of the two of them by the car. Okay, they go off for, off for one last ride. The trip over there was beautiful. When everything starts changing, drying up, clearing off, you feel like your whole life is starting. Henry felt it too. The top was down on the car, hummed like a top. And the, the top was, wait, the top was down on the car and hummed like a top. He's got it running great, right? It's not that he smiled again or even joked, but his face looked to me as if it was clear, more peaceful. It looked as though he wasn't thinking of anything in particular except the bare fields and the windbreaks and the houses we were passing. Um, I think Henry's already crossed the line. I, I don't know how to read that, actually. I don't know if, A, he's already crossed the line and he's already, he's in this serene moment right before he commits suicide. Um... Or if they're in motion, so he has some peace. I'm not. I'm not sure. The river was high and full of winter trash. 
Water almost always symbolizes life in literature. Here, life is too full. The river is flowing and overflowing, and it's full of trash, right? This is not peaceful water, clear water flowing along. It's, it's overflowing nature, full of trash, and that's very symbolic, uh, as I'm sure you see. As I watched, it felt like something squeezing inside me and tightening and trying to let go all the same time. I knew I was not just feeling it myself. I knew I was feeling what Henry was going through at that moment, except that I couldn't stand the closing and opening. I jumped to my feet. I took Henry by the shoulders and I started shaking him. Wake up, I says, wake up, wake up, wake up. I didn't know it would come over me. I sat down beside him. His face was totally white and hard, so Henry kind of has this, this moment. Um, The, 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 the pre-war connection that they had is back, but it's a painful connection because Henry is chained. I know it, he says, I know it, I can't help it, it's no use. We start talking. He said he knew what I'd done with the car. It was obvious it had been whacked out of shape and not just neglected. He said he wanted to give the car to me for good now. It was no use. He said he'd fixed it just to give it back to me. I should take it. No way. I says, I don't want it. And so they have this, this fight. But it's good, though. It's, this is good, right? That's okay. You take it. I don't want it. Take that car. No. Make me. I say, and then he grabs my jacket, rips the arm loose. The jacket is a class X, suede with tags and zippers. I push Henry backwards off the log. He jumps up and bowls me over. We go down in the clinch and come up swinging hard for all we're worth. With our fist, he, he socks my jaw so hard I feel like it swings loose. Them at his rib cage and land a good one under his chin so his head snaps back. He's dazed. He looks at me and I look at him. And then his eyes are full of tears and blood. And at first I think he's crying, but no, he's laughing. Ha ha, he says, ha ha, take good care of it. It's, I, I think that fight is brothers, I don't know, the bond is still there, maybe, maybe the bond is, I don't know, it's not, it's not, I know, sometimes I don't know how to read something, but I think I know how not to read it. It's not them fighting, yeah, they're fighting, but it's not them fighting, it's not like this fight causes the suicide, the suicide was gonna happen from way, 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 way back. Maybe even before maybe Vietnam, but Vietnam certainly pushes it, pushes Henry into such a bad state, he's gonna kill himself. Lyman keeps him alive. Heck, while they're fighting, he's still alive. You wanna go, you wanna, you wanna go on back? I asked after a while, maybe we could snag a couple of nice Capshaw girls. He says nothing, but I can tell his mood is turning again. They're all crazy, the girls up here, every damn one of them. You're crazy too, I say to jolly him up. Crazy Lamartine boys, yeah. He looks as though he will take this wrong at first. His face twists, then clears. You know, he, he the La, crazy Lamartine boys, he almost, that's right, he says, crazier in hell, crazy Indians. Then I think it's the old Henry. He throws off his jacket, starts swinging his leg out from the knees like a fancy dancer. He's down doing something between a grass dance and a bunny hop. No kind of dance I ever saw before, but neither is anyone else on this green growing earth. He's wild. He wants to pitch. Whoopee. He's up and at me, all over me. All this time I'm laughing so hard, so hard my belly is getting tied up in a knot. Gotta cool me off, he shouts all of a sudden. Then he runs over to the river. Um, it's just very sad how hard Lyman. Hey, let's 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 go get some girls. Crazy Lamartine boys. Yeah, you and me, and uh, crazier than hell. Crazy Indians. Um, and it, you know, it's just things are coming to a head. The waters, the waters are the the struggle between life and death here inside Henry is so intense, and and he just gives in to the intensity, the draw of the overflowing um, water full of debris, and he he runs in. Um, No sound comes from the river after he, the splash he makes. So I run right over. I look around. It's getting dark. He's halfway across the water, and I know he didn't swim there, but the current took him. It's far. I hear his voice, though, very clearly across it. My boots are filling, he says, just like we heard in the first paragraph. He says this in a normal voice, like he just noticed, and he doesn't know what to think of it. Then he's gone. A branch comes by another branch, and I go in. By the time I get out of the river off the snag I pulled myself onto, the sun is down. I walk back to the car, turn on the high beams, 
drive it up the bank, I put it in first gear, take my foot off the clutch, I get out, close the door and watch it plow softly into the water, the headlights reach as it in as they go down, searching, still lighted, eat well. And then there's only the water, the sound of it going and running and going and running and running. They both, both of these guys, they both always seem to be running from something. Um, not toward anything, but running from something. And it was good, and it kept them alive for a while um, in their difficult existence. Um, but as one of my students once said, and I wrote it down here, I learn a lot from you guys. Henry was a prisoner of war. All natives are prisoners of war um, on, nat on reservations. Um, all Native Americans in some way are, are prisoners of war. Um, and uh, there's a lot of truth to that. They both suffer for it. And then Henry just can't take it when he is a, a literal prisoner of war. In, uh, in Vietnam. So great, a great story. Um, I think the saddest one we've had all semester. Um, and Lyman, I believe Lyman is telling us the story not to make himself look good, even though he does, but he needs to tell himself that he did all he could. He needs to tell us, he needs to tell somebody, I did everything I could. I gave him the car one last time. He is selfless in his pursuit of helping his brother. He is selfless in pursuit of helping his brother. We should all be such good brothers. But Louise Erdrich is saying that when it comes right down to it, they've been through so much trauma as Native Americans. And then Henry with the additional trauma of being a prisoner of war in Vietnam, that even a brother's um, support and love for one another has its limits.